I'm, I'm doing my second story time for the day because I feel like I still have more crap. So what the hell? I might as well just get these stories out. So, cheers. But today, I'm going to be doing a story time about the worst appointment of my life. The worst appointment of my life. And, and, and by appointment, I, I hope you know what I mean by appointment. <laughs> so, I was in college and I was at a party with my friends. And I'm going to call my friend Muff. I'm going to call her Muff. Call her Muffy. So, I'm in Muffy's dorm and we're chilling. And you know me and my kids are just bonding, we clicking, but this this other girl there, it's a group of us. And so we're just vibing, we're just vibing and I'm describing like what kind of guy I want, what kind of guy I want to deal with because it was like the beginning of the semester. And so I was really kind of like innocent in a sense like People may have thought I had more experience in life and in things than I actually have. Than I actually had. So look at the shrimp guys, I'm sorry. So yeah, you know, uh, people may have thought I had more experience in life or with guys than I actually did. And so I'm just explaining like, oh I like I'm tall, dark skin, um, I want them to have swag. And I really don't change. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So in comes this guy, and he's like, he's walking into like her dorm hallway, or whatever. And he is literally what I described to the T, like to the T. And so everybody kind of like makes an instant, like, there you go. Um, I thought, you know, I kind of like ugly guys, like, I like, like, you swaggy, you have a dope demeanor, but you kind of ugly, like, that's, that's what I like. <laughs> so, he was exactly that, no shade, like, no shade, he was exactly that, and, and so, we, um, you know, him and I are talking, and it just seems like, you know, we're cooking. And I was just really attracted to him, willing to, you know, make a mistake or two. And I was just like, in college, and I just kind of wanted to like spread my wings. And I felt like, oh, I found the person to spread my wings, honey. And I'm gonna float like a butterfly, sing like, <laughs> sing like a bee. So him and I are talking, we are drinking, and we wasn't really supposed to be drinking on campus, but like, whatever, it never happened. And so, yeah, like we sitting there, and him and I are just vibing. So they, I lived on a really far part of campus. I lived like in the fancy dorm, so. So everybody in the group, we were hanging out like all night. So everybody in the group kind of like walked me to my dorm. And so he just was like, oh, you know, we got to exchange numbers. And he was really smooth. And he was cool, calm. And like in other story times, it should be up by the time I post this. But I really like guys who like play it cool. And like they just know how to hold it down regardless of what their intentions are like they just can hold it down like I'm, I'm attracted to that i like like big wiener energy so um he was just like really calm he was like oh yeah he did it like on the slick like oh yeah let me get your number um I, I, my number's not in here i gotta give it to you i'm like yeah you do So I'm like, yeah, you do. So he gives me his number, and we're texting, we're talking, 
and all of that jazz. So let me get to the good stuff. So one night, he texted me and he's like, oh yeah, you should come to my dorm, yada, yada, yada. So at this point, I have no ex real experience. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I just felt like I wanted to be grown and I wanted to be outside. So I'm like, I'm going and I'm gonna do whatever the hell I said I wanted to do or whatever he's trying to do. And so I take my ass outside. And so as we're walking outside to his dorm, cause it was kind of like, it was a really long walk. So as, oh, he was a ball player. So, you know, like there was those stereotypes or whatever, but he was really cool and down to earth at the time. And I could kind of tell like he was full of himself in a way, but talking to me, he was just cool. He was regular. So I found out we had the same birthday. So I felt like the cars, the, the stars was just aligned for like us to do. And I was like, no way. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. He showed me his ID. We definitely had the same birthday. And it was just lit after that. I didn't even know what I was doing, but I was like, whatever you're supposed to put on the guy, I'm, I'm gonna put that on him with some sauce. <laughs> and so we get to his dorm, and as we're walking to the dorm, he's like, oh, watch what I do to you, because it's very clear, like, what we're going to do. Even since young, like, I've never really been into guys, like, Maybe women think they want to be with me or I've always been. Now you have to have respect. Ladies, never lose your respect no matter what's going on. But I also appreciate, learn to appreciate honesty. So, um, you know, I knew what I was walking to go do. I knew what I was walking to go do. And so, he's like, oh, I'm gonna tear you up and this and that. And I'm like, oh, I ain't never been taught before. <laughs> and so, I get to his dorm. Immediately, like, as soon as he took the fitted off, it was like the fitted had superpower or his swag just left the building. Like, just, Exited his body. He was nervous. Mind you, he was like really tall. He was like six, seven. All his swag just like left the building. Um, corny nigga has entered the chat. He just appeared really nervous. And I was just like. So we're trying to get down to business. He's like playing around a lot. And I'm just like, listen, you know what? I'm here. Like, because I really wasn't interested in him like that i was just trying to you know be spontaneous and have a little fun i can make this story extremely long but i'm just gonna say number one he had the <laughs> the scrimp and although i was like tidy whitey nothing going on well <gasps> i didn't i the shrimp. You six seven. Why you have the shrimp? Very much so giving scrimp. And so I was just kind of devastated, and I'm just like, oh, I know what I'm not doing. You know, I'm not doing none of that. I ain't. It, it ain't giving that. And so at this point, I'm just kind of ready to get it over with. He's whack. He's boring a little bit. I just want to have fun. I might still enjoy myself. You know, I have to double dip because now uh, the stress in PTSD is kicking in. Another, the, the, the number, the biggest red flag, the biggest red flag was he tried to do the do unprotected. First of all, I'm being spontaneous. I don't know you like that. Number two, I just 
don't really deal with guys who just go for that type of energy because it just lets me know like i'm not that special and ladies if you think you're that special that's like narcissism that that man is probably like a little dirty a little nasty you know he'll do that with anybody and so i'm just like what are you doing He's just like, oh, why do I have one? I'm like, oh, you should go find one because that's just not an option. And we went through that struggle like multiple times. Like I even caught him trying to take it off. And by this time, I'm like really stressed. And I don't know why. I think I I'll get to that at the end, but I should have just gotten up and left. Just got up and left, but I didn't. And so, um, you know at this point i'm just like overwhelmed and i'm just annoyed and so i'm just like you know what i'm gonna just get this over with and i saw him kissing on him and then he's going limp because he can't do and it's like he was really nervous and i'm just like you had all this bde outside where is it at like i i that's 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 what I need. That's what I want. That's what I came here for. I don't know what the shrimp energy is. I mean, <laughs> but I don't like it. I like my shrimps in a boil. <laughs> hey. And so it just wasn't working for me. So at this point, I'm still trying to be spontaneous. And I'm just like, listen, this going to happen. So I'm trying to set the tone. We go to actually do what we're supposed to do. Y'all not gonna believe what happened. Like y'all just not gonna believe me. He had a sexual eruption at the leg. And even at the leg. Like the 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 slip the sliding, yeah. Like let that sink in. The forty five minutes of like dry cactus foreplay. I don't even know how my sis percolated on. You know the this hours of like the texting, the walking, the 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 the. the entertaining him to fighting him to wear a condom and in the slide in he's like nah your shit was crazy no my shit wasn't that crazy like i you know no nobody's shit is that crazy and i'm just not one of those girls who's gonna be impressed by that like no you had all this mouth I tried to let him redeem himself. Nothing. And so I was very pissed off. And then he tried to, what pissed me off the most, what pissed me off the most is because he was a ball player. Like I said, he, he, I could tell that he had cocky energy. He tried to kind of like use it at the end of our little encounter. Like, yeah, you know. My mother told me, kind of like, you're a pretty girl, you, you might try to trap me. I'm like, first of all, you know, and, and see, these are like the warped mindsets that a lot of guys who have like popularity or something that they think is worth something. I was just like, first of all, you, in this situation, you would have tried to trap me. Second of all, if I wanted to sleep with somebody for clout, I would have slept with somebody whose jersey is actually dirty. Like, you don't play. And it's like, yeah, humble yourself quickly because you're not dealing with, you know, like you kiss somebody's ass the entire time. And then when you get what you want, it's like insinuating that they might be a groupie for you. Yeah, I will hurt your feelings. And so I cursed his ass out. I got dressed and I left. Um, I lied to you not. I did not speak to his ass again. And he knew my friends. He knew people that I hung around. And I refused to speak to him. 
because I just felt like you were disrespectful. That was extremely disrespectful. You wasted my time and you have a shrimp. We don't have anything to talk about like ever, period, ever. And he would just like be eyeballing me at parties and shit like that. And I'm gonna be like, like don't say anything to me, period, point blank, like ever. And so, <laughs> you know, that was my horrible worst experience ever. Um, but what I will say, because at every video, every story time that I do, I do want to leave with um, on a positive note and with a message. And what I'll just say is this, girls, if you're going to college or you are just in your 20s, your early 20-somethings, your teenage years, even if you're grown, because some grown women don't know games, um, you know, when guys make you uncomfortable or when they're just doing something that you don't like, it is okay to get up and walk away. And I'm saying this not in on a safety or like a PSA. A lot of times as women, we will sit through discomfort because we don't want to make men uncomfortable. And we absolutely have the right to say like, you're whack. And a lot of times we protect men's feelings in that regard. We don't say what's what. We don't say what's what, and it's absolutely okay to say, like, nah, I'm not feeling you. Nah, that's whack. Nah, I'm out. Nah, you, you, you ain't even do that right. Speak up for yourself. And also, don't mess with no dude who, you know, if, if he doesn't want to protect himself and his body and ultimately do right by himself, nine times out of ten, he would never be right like you. Because you see how somebody who was trying to have raw unprotected sex with me who didn't know me well enough for anything like that the minute he got his satisfaction which was literally not even 10 seconds the minute that he got his satisfaction the role of who he thought i was and how he thought i was just immediately changed for some women that can break them and so, to, to avoid being just disappointed by a lot of young men who just don't do the work on themselves or just don't care enough to be a decent human being because they feel like they're in their source and they're lit and they don't have to spin back and pay attention to you, just protect yourself from them. You don't have to deal with whatever these individuals feel like they, they have to bring into your life. If they whack, they whack simple and plain if they whack they whack cut them let them go no shrimp unless it's in your boil okay <laughs> and i was very proud of myself to this day that is the worst experience of my life and it was the last one like that and so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna cheers to that that I ain't let no whack ass nigga manipulate me no more. Mm. Hi, haters. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, you know, as women, we have we have the right to say like, get the fuck out of here. You're whack. That's whack. Everything that you just presented, everything that he presented to me that night was whack. And I sat through it longer than I should have. Had I stuck with my guns and just said like, hell no, when I first initially felt just turned off and like my shit was gonna dry up like a cactus. Had I stuck to my guns in that regard, he would have never got to have his little eruption on my leg, like a dog. Like, what is that? Like, yo, know, like, no, what is that? So, <laughs> I hope you guys are not only entertained by my story time, but find it useful and use it to learn the signs of like when niggas are just 
plain out corny. Don't waste your time. You know, I hope me eating my little crab legs. I know I was distracted because these are just so good. But I hope you guys are entertained and you take something from it because, girl, we don't got to deal with these corny ass individual moves. Clip them. Clip them. <laughs> Bye, guys.